In this presentation, we'll record a transaction for cash received or tuition on account. In other words, tuition had been recorded in the past in accounts receivable and now is being collected upon within QuickBooks Pro, QuickBooks Desktop. Here we are in our practice problem QuickBooks file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view drop down and selecting the open windows list. Let's first take a look at our Excel file to see what our objective is. Here is our Excel file. We are on number three. Number three saying here we have collections for tuition and fees receivable. That means that cash is going to be going up and the tuition receivables will then be going down. So we build for the receivables in the past in a similar fashion as we would for a for-profit type of organization. And then now we're collecting on them. So we're going to be decreasing the receivable. If we record this out, we're going to say that the cash will then be going up. And so we're going to say finally cash will be going up and it'll be in the positive uh, space now, which is nice. And then we have the cash increase there and then the tuitions receivable is going to be going down. So I'm going to say this equals the tuition receivable will be going down. That's going to be our transaction. Now you can imagine this transaction happening multiple times. This will be basically the format of the transaction every time we were going to receive uh, on account. Receive cash for tuition that had been recorded as revenue in the past. Us then tracking the, tra uh, the tuition receivables in uh, the receivables here. How do we record this in QuickBooks? If we go back to QuickBooks, we're going to say then that uh, we had the invoice, which would increase the receivable account. Now it's going to be going back down. When we receive the payment, we can imagine the payment now being uh, received in the mail for the tuition that was billed or invoiced for in the past. So we're going to go to the receive payment item. And then I'm going to choose the receive from, I'm going to say student to. Now notice we get a pop-up here that says, I know this customer has open invoices. Why don't they show up in the invoice table? There are two reasons. The customer has open invoices in another accounts receivable account. That should be our reason here. So I'm going to close this out. Just note that we don't have anything showing up in the invoices. Why? We have two receivable accounts. So we got to make sure we're, we're uh, tracking these two accounts. We're currently in the pledges receivables. If I then go to the tuition and fees receivable, there is our invoice. So I'm gonna select that invoice if I was to double click on it. I'm gonna close that. If I double click on it, it will then go to that invoice. I'm gonna close this back out. Now this is another kind of lump sum invoice transaction. Therefore, the amount we're gonna receive isn't gonna be exactly equal to it. It's gonna be the 222,840. So we're gonna then put in the 222,840, 222,840. Tab, tab. So we have a partial payment on that invoice. Let's make it as of the 16th is going to be our payment date. And let's just check that again. 222840. Okay, so what's this going to do? Increase the undeposited funds because it's a customer payment. And then the other side is going to be going to the undeposited funds increase. The other side decrease in the accounts receivable. So we're going to say save and close and check that out. I'm going to say yes. Let's take a look at the trial balance. Now also note that as we do that, of course, we, we put something into undeposited funds and therefore the deposit uh, screen or tab or icon shows that red item saying that there's another deposit that needs to be deposited. It's not yet in the checking account, but in undeposited funds. Let's go look at it there. We're going to go into the trial balance to do that. We're going to say that we have the undeposited funds should be up top. Here it is on 222840. We can make this a little bit larger by going to the customize reports up top, fonts and numbers, change the font size to 11, and then OK, yes, and OK. So there we have undeposited funds, double clicking on that. There's our 222840. That's going to be a payment. Closing that back out, then the other side going to the receivable in tuition and fees receivable. Double clicking on that. We see the 222840 here. That's going to be our payment as well. Closing that back out. Note that if we had a lot of customers, of course, you can imagine this transaction happened many times. We're going to enter the invoice and then the receivable. We would need to track the receivable by who owes us the money. For that, we have a subsidiary type report, which is going to be the reports drop down. Customers and receivables, we would be looking to the customer balance detail type of report. And that'll show us who owes us the money, what makes up. Uh, that receivable amount. Now notice that this adds up to the 7270 uh, because we're adding up the two receivable accounts here. We got the receivable here 
at the 59. So we've got the 5910. And then we have the tuition here at plus the 1360. And that gives us the 7270. So if I go back to the customer balance detail, that's the 7270. Now you could uh, customize this. You could put some filters in place if you would like to filter through these accounts. So, if we... so I'm going to close this back out now. Closing this back out, we're going to go back to the trial balance. Now what we would like to do is take it out of undeposited funds, this amount in undeposited funds, put it into the bank or the checking account. To do that, we'll go back to the home page. We want to be in the deposit screen where we have that red one. We're going to select the deposit. We're going to record the deposit. We're going to select the item we need to record or want to record and say, OK, there it is. And this is a deposit screen which should deposit or increase the checking account, as can be seen up top, the other side taking it out of the undeposited funds. We're going to say save and close. Yes. Then we'll go back to the trial balance within the trial balance checking account. Now here, double clicking it. We see the checking account went up by that 222840, closing it back out. The other side going to undeposited funds, which has now returned to zero. Double clicking on it, going to the bottom. There it is. It has been decreased from undeposited funds.